Does anyone else like to address the board? Mike Boyle, 5094 Emory Street. Um, I did get the letter from GAR by Mike Boyle. Sorry. And um, I looked at it, I called the 1877 numbers. It went through. And I called to, to ask him not to come on the property. I guess the question is, I have a couple couple issues. Number one, uh, I got the RFP response from GAR. Very well done. I do RFPs all the time. Um, a couple questions came up in here I thought were pretty interesting. Um, one is they had a sample in here from the city of Kingston, or the uh, town of Kingston, or city of Kingston. And uh, the city of Kingston, they said that they were going to perform an exterior ins inspection on the property. No request for an interior. Why did Cicero ask for an interior? Well, the, the project's really being done under state guidelines. And one of the things that we do require is good information. The interior requ we request is so that we can get better information. As you, as you know, it's very simple to deny access to the property. Uh, but we are required to ask that. OK, that brings up my second question. Um, in the letter, and when I was at the uh, assessment meeting that they had at the uh, senior center the other day, I found it interesting that the way she presented it was is that if you're not at home and GAR shows up at the house, they, they will do the exterior inspection. That's correct. Chief Schnell, is that trespassing? No, they didn't say they'd enter the property, did they? No, good. And that's why we're requesting you, to, if you don't want us on the property, give them a call and we will not go on. Okay, but there's, there's people that didn't get the letter. Okay, so my, my concern is somebody comes home to their house. Now, a house burned down in my neighborhood the other day, and I watched somebody come home to their house and it was burning to the ground. And I saw the expression on the family's face, okay? Not good. I can't imagine somebody coming home and seeing people doing stuff around their house, and you know how people are. Some people just 86 that stuff. And they're going to have people around their house and they're going to flip out and find out what's going on. I guess the question is, under Orps' manual that I've read online, it says that they, an assessor in the training manual, that would go to the door, ask to come in, no. They ask for an exterior inspection, no. They leave the property and do it from the right away. That was my understanding. That's correct. Yep. Okay, so, in, 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 and I, I'm not trying to, to complain here, it's just my neighbors have come to me and asked because they don't come up these meetings all the time. And I'm like, they have to do it from the right way if you tell them to. But why is the burden on the homeowner to call GAR? Why should they have to call anybody? It's the burden of the town and the assessment office, not the burden of the homeowner. Right. It, I would say that if Gar gave the impression that if you weren't home, they would come onto your property anyway, that was not the proper thing for them to have said. Well, then you need you to know, talk to Cindy because I asked her a specific well, question. She told me that the senior center. No, no, that is what they're there to do. Um, and that's why we're asking people that don't want us to because what, what happens in these contracts is most people have no problem with that as long as they've been notified, which they have been. No, not everybody. <clears throat> Why? I, I, and those that don't, and those that do have a problem are calling Gar and telling them not to come out. I'm just saying that, <clears throat> in my opinion, it is, it is it is nobody's business to go on anybody's property unless they have permission to do that. And, you know, there's a thing called the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution, you know, and I think that there may be a constitutional issue if you have people going on their property to take measurements and they're not home. And somebody comes home to their property and sees people around there and are not in, in 86 that letter. I mean, you could have some serious fist fights and everything out. Who knows? I don't know. You know, they're supposed to wear a badge. What happens to the badge? You know, then the other question was in the, in the RFP. It said here that the, the town required a $5 million liability policy. Blank. But yet they only proposed a three. Did we get five out of them or is it still three? I can't recall. I know there was an issue we discussed um, earlier. Uh, do you recall? I don't recall. Off the top of my head. Yeah. Has the contract been placed yet? Right? Yes. Did they sign the agreement? Yes. Because mm -hmm. in, the in the response, they put only a $3 million uh, blank, but it said five was a requirement of the RFP. Another uh, question came up. Um, <coughs> sorry, I have to bring this up. In, in, in the RFP response, it also said that there was. Um, the person, the municipal officer who represents the town of Cicero was the contract administrator, which would be the legal office. No. No. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. Yes. I'm sorry. I misunderstood you first. Yes. 
And in the RFP response, it also said that there was about 10 to 20 percent of, of the assessments will more than likely be appealed, especially given the current economic times, which makes about 2,500 potential assessment challenges. I think it'll be a lot more than that. So the question is, if there's questions that come up in the assessment, does that go to the legal office or does that go to the assessor's office? I, mean, I think it general. depends on what yeah, stage of the grievance when, process yeah, you're absolutely. at. During the informal hearing process is when they will be seeing 25, 3,000, whatever uh, people, and that's handled right there at that, at that um, informal hearing. Okay, any, any legal questions goes where? To the assessment office or to the legal office? Uh, if, it's, if it's not an assessment question, yes, it would go to our, our legal. Okay, let's say, for example, I'm used to set an example. I'm sorry to take more of my three minutes. But if there's a site survey issue that's a legal question, uh, something on the schematic that doesn't jive, it's going to go into the legal office, correct? Have we, have we taken any account in the legal fees that are going to have to be implemented above and beyond the $935,000? The way that the current retainer agreement with the town is written is that our office does not charge outside the retainer agreement for any assessment-related issues up and until there is an Article 7 petition that is formally placed before a judge. Okay, but any so but anything any, up until that point would be covered under the current retainer agreement. Okay, and that includes phone calls, many residents. <laughs> I don't represent individual residents, mm -hmm. so I probably can't take phone calls from additional from individual residents about town issues. I have to give legal advice to the town, meaning its officers and representatives. I think any residents. Call should be calling Brad, and he can direct him in the right direction. But he could refer that to legal. I, I just want to know if you guys are charging 0.15 now. Let me just get to the cut the chase. You guys are going to charge 0.15. I just per said that we're not no, charging no, outside the retainer was... up until there's an Article 7 petition that is placed before a judge on a judge's calendar. You're part time, right? Yes. In the RFP response on page 20 and in the RFP, it said that it would be an additional 15 hours per week. Is that the minimum max? For you? Well, probably the minimum. I mean, that, that's to be flexible depending on what's going on at, at any given time with, with the project. And there's no overtime in it, right? It's just spread with 50 Oh, yeah, there's no overtime. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Is there anyone else like to address the board? I think I've got 30 okay. seconds yeah. left. <laughs> Brad, one other question uh, I know Mike brought up. Cindy did allude to the fact that during this assessment that they would do, as he said, from the front of the property, the legal 16 feet, whatever, but they were going to walk to the back of the property to take pictures from the back. Mm -hmm. To do that, especially where I live, they were to go on my neighbor's property. Now, I'm on the understanding they're not supposed to go to the back of the residence to take pictures from the back. If you refuse them access to your property? If you refuse them you know, access, absolutely, they, they won't go back there. But they'll they'll do their best to take a shot. If, if you say, come on my property, it's okay to measure the outside of my home, they will do their best to get a shot in the back. I mean, if they can't, they can't. That's okay. fine. One final recommendation might be on, on the future meetings that we have, I'm sorry, I should be talking to you, is that maybe a questionnaire should go out to the people in attendance because these type of questions came up after the meeting. I heard people talking as we were leaving. Can they go to the back of my house? Where can they do? What can they take pictures? Maybe have something that a resident, they don't have to sign. These are questions that the people have about this because it's something new. Put a fax up on the internet. So it, it's something that maybe it'll, it'll tell us. Sure, uh, and there's no reason why you couldn't just send in a question to, to Gar or give him a phone call or, or give it to me and I'll forward it. Okay. That's, that's no problem. But I think we should get that out at the meeting so Cindy could say if you have that, mm -hmm. you know, sure. here's yeah. it again. Okay. Okay, thank you.